Hello, so welcome back to the next video. So where we left off previously, we were sorting out the Twitter bird here. So what we're going to do, if we hold down the Alt key and click on the Twitter icon layer to bring everything back, and if we just move to the side and just zoom out slightly, the next thing we need to add <clears throat> is the Twitter and the follow us text. So if we just jump back over to Visual Web Developer, now that we're back in Visual Web Developer, we need to go to the source view and then we need to put some text next to the image. So we're going to use the following. So we'll use a H2, the heading 2, and we'll call this Twitter. And underneath that, we'll have a, a paragraph. And I think it said follow us. So if we just save that with Control S, and then if we go to the design, you can now see we've got the text in there, but obviously it's not lining up next to it, and it's not the same color, or the, probably the same font, to be honest. So if we just go to Photoshop for a second, and if we just hide the slices for now by going to View, Show, Slices, if we just zoom in, so if we just select the text tool by pressing the T on your keyboard, and if we just highlight this Twitter text here, and we can see what the font is. So the font for this is Vedana. And obviously the color is white. So if we just jump back over to Visual Web Developer. So there's a few things we need to do first to get the text, the Twitter text and the follow us text to shift up to the right hand side of this image. We need to give this image some properties. So what we'll do, if we just go to the source view, so we need to target just this specific image here. Any ID of footer left that has an image, do the following. So if we just go to the style sheet, so we want to say footer left that has an image, so IMG. We want to say the following, we're going to say float left, and then just save that with a control S. If we go to the master page, and then we go to design. You can now see the text has now floated right up to the right hand side of the Twitter bird. So we're starting to get somewhere now. The next thing we need to tackle, if we come over to the source view. So again, we're going to use a similar sort of technique to uh, target the H2 here. So it's going to be any ID with a footer left that contains a H2, do the following. So back to the style sheet. We may as well just copy this one here. But all we need to do is just change it from image to H2. Remove this property here, and we're going to say color is going to be white. So if we just preview that. So as you can see now, that's changed straight away. The font was Vedana. So if we go back to the style sheet, so we're going to say font. If I could spell font, that is. So font Vedana. And if we just go back to the page, and now you can see now it's starting to take shape. So if we just go back to Photoshop, we need to now get the color for this follow us here, which is probably obviously like a light gray. So if we grab our eyedropper tool, if we just click on the text here, and it's now giving us the color here, which is 727272. So that's nice and easy to remember. So for the follow us here, let's go to the source view. So again, we're going to target this in the same way we did the other two properties. So if we come back, if we just copy this, and we're going to change this to P for paragraph, we're going to say 727272. And if we just go back to the master page and design, you can now see that's taking shape. Um, I don't know what size font they were, so if we just go back to Photoshop and grab our text tool. So the Twitter text is 24 and the follow us is 12. So if we just go back to Visual Web Developer. So the Twitter was, so font size 24 pixels and then the P was font size 12 yep 12 pixels and then it goes to the master page 
and now that's looking quite nice if we just go back to if we look at this at the moment it's quite close to this edge here which in the in the document in the photoshop document i don't think it is i think we need to push it over uh, to the right hand side and probably down slightly as well if we just go to photoshop and just zoom out slightly so yeah so in ours it's quite close up here to the top of this border uh, so we need to bring it down um, so it's pretty much in line with the uh, box at the top so that's easy to do so if we come over here so we need to push this down so the way we're going to do this we we're going to say the footer left div we're going to give it some margin on the top so if we come up to the footer left now this is the box that holds all the content on the left hand side so remember we created so this is the footer left so this is holding so far the image the h2 tag and the p tag so it's going to tell this div to have some margin top and it'll kick it down uh, from the top of that border so if we say margin top i reckon 30 pixels and then if we just go to the design you can now see that's been kicked down 30 pixels so we just preview this in a browser just so we can actually see what's happening okay so here's our design if we could come down the page so as you can see here, we've got the Twitter bird, the Twitter text, and the follow us. There's one problem I can see, is that the Twitter text and the follow us text is far too close to the bird here on the right-hand side. So we just need to kick these two elements off slightly as well. So if we just minimize the browser, and then if we just go to the source, in fact, if we stop debugging, so click on debug, stop debugging, and then just close this window here. So we need to tell the H2 and the P, um, to have margin left to move it away from the bird so if we code to the h2 here and we say margin left of say 15 pixels and then if we may as well copy this one and then paste it onto the p as well so as you can see here we've added that 15 uh, pixels of margin left and it has added it here but we need to add more so because obviously it's not, it hasn't moved the text. So if we just go back to the style sheet, I reckon if we change this to say 60 pixels, and again the same for the P tag as well. And if we just preview that in the master page, and as you can see now the text has moved, which does look a lot nicer. So we've now done that. The next thing we need to add is the speech bubble. So if we just jump back over to Photoshop. So we need to slice out a particular portion of the speech bubble. So if we just zoom in, we need to grab this angular bit here. So we're going to click on the speech bubble, so it selects it in the layers panel. Just move it down so it's out of the way of the follow us here. We're going to grab our slice tool, and then we're going to slice out that particular portion. Like that, just zoom in so we can see it a little better. Double click on it and we're going to call this top and then click on OK. So we need to save that out, but we need to first of all make everything transparent. So if we hold down the Alt key and click on Speech Bubble, and then if we go to File, Save for Web and Devices, come down to the actual Speech Bubble here, click on the, the slice and select PNG24, click on Save. Make sure selected slices is selected and click save. So we've now got that portion. So if we just jump back over to Visual Web Developer. So we need to go to the source view. So we just need to add some space underneath the follow us. And if we just refresh the solution explorer here on the right hand side, you'll now see the speech top.png. We're just going to drag that over. So if we just save that page and go to design. If we now just go to the web page and just refresh, you can now see uh, you've, we've got this angular bit here. So we just need to add the speech box underneath. So if we just go back over here and go to the source view, there's a couple of ways we can do this. The way we're going to do it though, so we're going to create a div with an ID and we're going to call this speech box like that and we're going to create our closing comment so it's going to be speech box so we now need to style this so we're going to copy the text here so we're going to add it in here so we need to give it a width 
So the width will say 300 pixels. Now the height, we're going to say auto again, so it expands and contracts. So if we just preview this in the master page, you can now see we've got the box here. But the problem is the box is right next to the right hand side of the actual speech uh, angle thing at the top here. So what we'll do, we'll just come in here. So what we'll say is margin top and we'll say about 10 pixels. If we just preview that in the master page. So if we just say 20 pixels. So as you can see now, it's now come down away from the right hand side underneath the actual angle bit. So now we just need to push it to the right hand side. So if we go back to the style sheet and we're going to say margin left, we'll say 30 pixels. So I think that's looking quite nice now. What we'll do, we're going to go inside the source now. So inside of here, I just want to put some some breaks in here just so it fills it out. So this is just a, pe a page break. And I'm going to copy that and just put a few in there so it creates uh, the effect of height. So if I go to the design, so as you can see now, here's the speech box. And we've got like a bit of height on it. We just need to know the color for the background. So if we go back to Photoshop and if we click on the eye symbol holding the alt, it brings everything back. So we need to get the eyedropper tool and click. So we want 151515. So if we just go back to Visual Web Developer. So we go to the source and we're going to say background color is 151515. Close it off. And if we just go back to the web page and hit refresh, you can now see we're starting to resemble something like it is in the Photoshop document. Uh, but ours has a square uh, corner and not a rounded corner, but we can change that. So I've noticed as well there's a slight gap here between the angle and the actual main body of the speech box. So we just need to sort that box out as well. So what we'll say, we'll change the margin top to say 19 pixels and then go back to the web page, hit refresh. And uh, that's now connected the two together. So the final thing I'm going to show you before I go is how to get rounded corners. Um, obviously it only works in certain browsers though, um, but it's just the easiest way um, of doing it without having to use images. So if I just go back to Visual Web Developer. So to achieve the rounded uh, corner look on that particular box, it's quite easy to do. Like I said, it only works in certain web browsers is the following. I'm just going to paste it in. So this is the WebKit um, CSS style. So WebKit. Um, like I said, it only works in Chrome and Safari. Um, so you put dash WebKit dash border dash radius. So we're at, we're at affecting the radius of the corners, and then you give it a property. So I'm going to change that to say 20 pixels. Now, if we just preview this in the web page, and if I hit refresh, you'll notice every single corner will now be rounded. And there you go. That's the easiest way uh, to get that to work. Obviously, when people preview this in um, Internet Explorer, they're not going to be rounded. So that's the only downside to it. I'll show you that now. Okay, so here's the website in uh, Internet Explorer 9. Now, if I come down to the very bottom, you'll see we've got the box, but we don't have the rounded corners. Um, like I said, you could you could uh, do that with uh, images, but for the sake of this tutorial, I thought I would show you the, the nice way of doing it by using the WebKit extension. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the video here for now. I'm going to get both of these videos uploaded. Um, so as usual guys, thanks for watching. Please leave any comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.